So this is a, a classic traffic light problem. We have a 8 kilogram traffic light and it's supported by two wires. One wire on the right is at 70 degrees to the horizontal and the wire on the left is at 50 degrees to the horizontal. And it's important to realize that there are three ways to solve this, two of them using uh, trigonometry and one of them using a diagram. Um, so let's start off by doing this using the classic uh, um, resolve your forces, use, use Newton's second law, or, uh, Newton's first law horizontally and then Newton's uh, first law vertically and then solve. So we say um, the sum of the forces horizontal is equal to, now in my mind's eye I'm visualizing That is my horizontal component of TL. So that would be uh, um, uh, uh, the sum of the force horizontal equals zero, and that is going to be TL cosine 50. It's in a negative direction, so let's put the negative sign in. And then on this side, I'm thinking about that force to the side there. So that would be plus positive T R cosine 70 is equal to zero. Now, I want to solve for TL. So the trick you learn is that you isolate T R initially. So T R is equal to T L cosine 50 over cosine 70. And some people like to work out that, that fraction, other people just like to leave it. I tend to leave it. It's not got me my answer, so the next thing I do is I think, well, let's think about this vertically. So the sum of the forces vertically equals zero. And now I'm looking at that vector there, which is really that vector there. That vector there, there's my vertical component of TL. So it would be plus TL sine 50 added to, and now I'm thinking about this component of TR there, which would be uh, plus TR sine 70 added to, mustn't forget my 80 Newton weight minus 80 because the weight is downwards equals zero. Um, I have a term for TR, so let's just substitute that in. TL sine 50 added to TL cosine 50 over cosine 70 times sine 70. A lot of people forget that sine 70. They're so concerned about doing this substitution they forget about that sine 70. And let's put the 80 to the other side. So this is just, looks complicated, but they're just fractions. They're just like, you know, numbers less than one. So I'm gonna go sine 50. So sine 50 equals, and that's gonna be 0 0.766 TL added to. And then let's do a cosine 50 multiplied by a sine 70 divided by a cosine 70. And that's going to be 1.766 TL equals 80. So add these two guys together. So I go 0.766 added to 1.766 is equal to 2.523 uh, TL equals 80. So TL is equal to 80 over 2.523, which equals, uh, I'm going to do uh, 80 divided by second answer is going to equal 
five newtons. Just letting my uh, 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 digits run on. I can round later if need be. So that's the classic way of doing this. You start off, and you have, you start off, and you have uh, uh, resolve your forces horizontally, and you get a term. Isolate the thing you don't want. I do. I want TL, so isolate TR. Resolve your forces vertically. Substitute in. Solve for TL, and we get 31.595. 31 there's another way. Now let's look at this. So in this case, I need to make sure I have a decent diagram because I'm going to solve this in one step. So I'm going to actually redraw my diagram, being a little bit careful. I'm going to actually use a protractor just to give me some decent angles. So this is going to be 80. That's my weight. And then I'm going to go along here at something like 70 degrees. I just don't want to get my angles wildly out. I want them to be reasonably good angles. And then this is going to be 50 degrees. I'm not doing a vector diagram because I'm not caring about my lengths. But I just, I just want to have decent diagrams. The better the diagram here, the easier everything becomes to you. Um, and I know that this is 70 degrees, and I know that this is 50 degrees. So now what I need to do is I need to recognize the fact that I want to find TL. And if I want to find TL, I don't care about finding TR. I want to avoid TR being in my equation. And using forces, the way that I can ignore a force is by considering a direction that's perpendicular to the force. So I'm going to put my axis of interest deliberately perpendicular to TR. I don't care about TR. I don't want TR in my equation. So rather than resolving my forces, that is applying Newton's uh, uh, first law horizontally and vertically, I'm only going to apply Newton's law along this dashed line. So I can say the sum of the forces along the dashed line equals zero. That's the nice thing about these traffic light problems. You can take any direction and say the sum of the forces equals zero. But the fact of the matter is that if I'm clever about the direction that I choose, I can just immediately ignore one of my unknowns. So I have uh, uh, this diagram and I'm going to visualize. So here is my here is my there's one component and yeah these are to the correct length but they they're close enough just for my diagram. I'm just visualizing here. So these are the two lines that I am interested in. Let's get a Let's get a, a something with a bit of color here. And uh, so these are the two lines that I'm interested in. That's the component of TL along that line and the component of uh, the weight along that line. And if I look at that, this guy here, I can see. Oh, I've got to work out some angles. <laughs> I can't see that yet. Uh, so if this is 70 then that's 20, because those two together make 90. And uh, if this is um, 50, then that's 40. Okay. Now there's a 90 degree between this line here and that line there. 
and we have 20 and 40 make 60 degrees have already been used up 20 there and then 40 there so that's going to be a 30 so I can say that this is T L cosine 30 let's call that the positive direction so I'm going to call that positive T L cosine 30 let's go through those angles again I started off from here and if this is 70 then this is 20 to get to the vertical and then um, if this is uh, uh, one line and that is at 90 degrees to it uh, then I have um, I'm sorry uh, that, so that means that that must be add up to 90 and um, if this is 50 then that's 40 so I have 70 and 20 and 40 and I know that I need to have 90 between here and here so that adds up, has to add up to 90 so 20 and 40 make 60 so that means this must be 30 and then for this angle down here which is the next angle that I need then I need to look over here that's a vertical line upwards and that's a line along there and we had 40 and we had 30 making the angle between those two so this here would be 40 plus 30 is 70 with that being that case then this would be 80 cosine 70 now that end was positive so we have to make this end negative so those are my two resolved forces. So I come back down to here and I say, oh, in that case then, plus TL cosine 30 added to minus 80 cosine 70, oops, daisy, must equal zero. Let's just erase that. So if that equals zero, then we have TL is equal to 80 cosine 70 over cosine 30. TL must equal, let's have a look at this, we're going to get 80 times cosine of 70 divided by the cosine of 30. And that's going to be 31 point five nine newtons which was basically the same as we had before so two different ways of mathematically doing the same thing in one case it's if you like the brute force method where I resolve vertically resolve horizontally and then have two equations for two unknowns t left and t right and in this case, I'm careful about the axis that I choose. I make sure that my axis is perpendicular to the force I want to ignore. And then I resolve my two remaining forces, my TL, which I don't know, and my 80 that I do know. I resolve those so that um, um, I can apply Newton's first law. Uh, only one equation because I only have one unknown. So they, both, they work quite nicely. A um, bit more geometry here, you've got to be more comfortable with the geometry and I'll tell you up front that if your diagrams are not very good it's easy to get confused but you know we need to develop our skills at drawing better diagrams so it's, it's a good skill to have all around. There's another way which, which uh, um, is kind of illustrative, I'm not sure it's, I'm not sure it's, uh, um, there's another way which is illustrative uh, um, and that is we can just draw a vector diagram so let me get myself lined up here again I have eight uh, uh, Newtons downwards so let's go here there's one one two three four so I can use that actually I'm going to I'm sorry I'm gonna find myself a 
a ruler which has centimeters on it. Here's a ruler that has centimeters on it. So I look at this, and I can actually do 16 on this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do 16. So I'm gonna draw a line all the way down, and I'm gonna measure from the very beginning down to 16. So my scale is one centimeter equals uh, five newtons because this is 80 newtons so there's my weight beautiful so this is uh, 80 newtons let me just double check on that that's going to be um, 16 centimeters so each one is worth five now I don't know how long this T left is but I know uh, it has to end up here and it has 50 degrees to the horizontal. So let's put my protractor down like that. And I know the angle to the horizontal is 50 degrees. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that guy is there. I'm going to put a little mark there for my horizontal just so I can illustrate this. So we have boom, 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 boom. There's my horizontal. Here's my force. I don't know how long it is, so I'm just going to draw the line in. Somewhere, uh, um, that piece of string lies on that line. And then this guy is 70 centimeters from the horizontal, so let's put my protractor down here. And I'm going to do that there. And then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So that goes there. And again, just so that I have a reference, there's my horizontal. And then my piece of string for the right hand side lies along that line. Vectorially, these two vectors have to, these three vectors have to sum to zero because there's no resultant for the addition of vectors that are in equilibrium. That means there's no net force, which is the definition of equilibrium. So this is pointing to the right, so this is T right, and this is pointing to the left, which is T left. And now I need to find my answer. T left is what I'm looking for. And I don't want to stick my head directly in the in the camera. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. So that's six and a half centimeters, six point five centimeters, and each centimeter is worth five newtons. So five fives are twenty-five, kind of five carry two, five sixes, five sixes are thirty, and two makes thirty-two. 32.5 newtons and 31.5 so it's uh, uh, near enough <laughs> it's basically a, a fifth of a centimeter out which is not bad a couple of millimeters so very actually it's overlooked this is I, I would not allow you to solve a uh, um, a traffic light problem in my test using this method unless I said using a vector diagram but it gives a reasonable answer and if you want to check your homeworks this way it's a really good way of checking your homeworks so three different ways of doing these things there's the standard way which is long but it gets there there's the smarter way where you're careful about what axis you use and then there's the way that tends to be overlooked which is uh, uh, the graphical way.